Some people live their lives in joy. Other people struggle their way through life. You know what I call that? It's like trying to eat, eat soup with a fork. You can do it, but it exhausts you at the core of your being. You're tired at the end of your meal. I had a friend one time that had a very expensive car. He had a Ferrari. And one day, this Ferrari ran out of gas. True story. And there he was, standing there by his magnificent car, by the side of the road. Well, people stopped, not to help him, to admire the car. To walk around the car, to take pictures of the car on their iPhone. He stood there proudly, too proud, to say, I'm out of gas. <laughs> there he was, standing there by all that power potential. And it could not be turned on. Perhaps... That is the definition of your life or the definition of some people that you know. All that potential. And yet, they are out of fuel to go forward. To go into the future, let's look at that word, future. Well, the F, I say, that stands for faith. The U is utilized. You can have all the faith in the world, but until you utilize it, it doesn't have power. The T is for tomorrow, and the U-R is your, and the E is for energy. Faith, utilize, tomorrow, your energy. As you go forward, you have to redefine your life reinvent your life. You have to get away from the stumbling blocks that have been such a, such a block in your life in the past and get to the stepping stones that can help you to reach beyond anything that you've known in the past. Well, this is take-home religion. You are here to carry out your faith. And religion is something that has to be used, not just practiced for one hour a week. The very word religion means way of life. So as we walk into our future, let's examine some of the past stumbling blocks. Stumbling block number one to be overcome. The first thing to be mastered is a failure to recognize clearly and define what we want in life. Most people living in the world today, they have no idea what they want. They just have a vague idea of what they don't want. And they need to make a choice. This is a life experience of choice. Most people are living lives that other people wanted. They haven't started, even in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, to live their very own life. Let's say that you came over this afternoon, we were going to watch some TV. And we turned on the Home Shopping Network. We were watching all the different items come up, and so we decide to call them. It's toll free. Why not? So we call them, and they say, hello. This is the Home Shopping Network. Can I help you? And we say, yes, we'd love help. They said, well, how can we serve you? What would we send you today to make your life better? And here's the way we answer. We shrug our shoulders, and we say, I don't know. Just send us whatever you think will make us happy. <laughs> Many people live their lives that way. 
the Bible, it says, ask and you shall receive. Many live their lives letting others make the choices for them. And then they wonder, why are they dissatisfied in life? Many people live their whole lives long doing that. We have to get beyond that and realize it's okay to make a choice. Stumbling block number two, procrastination. What a shame. Why should I put off my God-given good until tomorrow? Why, if I have God saying, I want to give you this, do I say, no, 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 God. Just let me stall a little bit, maybe next week. Now, I'm not preaching at you. I have done that very thing. And what a, what a sad mistake that was for Chris. Why not decide to have a future that is too good to put off with God. If you know with certainty that God is one with you, and then you know that your future is absolute good, you don't want to put that off even for a minute. You want God to help you, and God will. God wants to help you. Procrastination is fear-based instead of faith-based. Stumbling block number three, lack of interest in acquiring specialized learning. Some people say, this is a true story, I had someone say this to me. They said to me, I want to open a restaurant. And I said, that's great. I'll pray with you. And then as we're talking, I ask what steps they had taken towards learning restaurant management. And they said, well, I don't know a thing. And as we're talking longer, I said, well, do you know how to cook? No, I don't know how to cook. <laughs> steps are faith-based. When you take steps in advance, you are preparing for your success. If you have faith in God, it will not just be in your mind, it will also be in your feet. You will be moving in the direction of your success. You have to walk the talk. You have to believe so much that you're walking even into an unknown future, because you know that God goes ahead of you on your path and making all things good. You know that every hill you see, or even mountain in your mind, that it might look like insurmountable to human mind, but you know you're connected with God. And God is bigger than your mountain of your problem. And you know that somehow, some way, even though you don't see the way right now, God's going to turn this stumbling block into a stepping stone. Stumbling block number four. Indecision. Indecision is a decision to do nothing of passing the buck. You know, this was the greatness in this time of inauguration of President Truman. President Truman said, the buck stops here. Well, the buck truly does stop with us in our lives. No one can live our life for us. We have to decide. If we're going to live life, we have to make the commitment to live it, 
not to sit on the sidelines, not to sit on the sofa, going through the remote control, watching other people live their lives. We have to get up and get in the game. If you want to become a master in something, you are not going to do it alone. God is going to do it with you. And if it's meant to be, God is going to open every door. But we, in our free will, have to step in the right direction. Stumbling block number five. The habit of relying and standing behind excuses instead of creating definite plans for the solution of our problems. All of us have problems. I have them. You have them. A lot of times we have so many problems at a certain juncture of life that we might be tempted to say this, Dear God, hmm, once I get past these problems, then I'll move. Oh boy, we say that so many times. What we're really saying is, God, I temporarily believe that these problems are bigger than you are. And I know that you can't work through me right now until I solve these problems. What do you do instead? You positively affirm a prayer affirmation for yourself like this. God, I have some mountains ahead of me, but with your help, I can climb these mountains. Not only will I climb these mountains, I will also get to my destination. And I'm Making a decision right now, I'm going to enjoy the journey because I am not eating the soup with a fork anymore. Amen. <laughs> My friends, we have to make a decision to go beyond our stumbling blocks to our stepping stones. I'm going to talk to the older members here and on the television audience. Do you remember the old Dr. Pepper bottles? The Dr. Pepper bottle had on it not only Dr. Pepper, but it also had 10, 2, and 4. They decided, actually doctors decided, this is the time that the human being fatigues during the daytime. Well, instead of pouring sugar down your throat at these times, why not throw prayer into your mind? Ten, two, and four should be a time daily when you have an uplift spiritually. There is great wisdom in that. So I'm going to ask you to do something at ten, two, and four. Now I'm going to ask my friend to hand out to the congregation that is here the handout to create stepping stones in our life. If you're listening by television, you can get one of these free of charge also. I will send it to you either electronically, if you send me your email at positivechristianity at gmail.com or write me and I'll send it to you. It is Positive Christianity, Box 7993, The Woodlands, Texas, 77380. Now, let's go over what we're going to do over the next 10 days. You cannot just get religion, a way of life, in a one-hour service. You have to practice this. And what better way to practice this than 10, 2, and 4 over the next 10 days? Day number one, at 10 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, 4 in the afternoon, I ask you to look at this Bible verse 
and meditate on it. Now, if you're at work, you don't have to close your eyes. Just take a few moments to think about the power in this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and God will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. You are agreeing to learn something new every day. You're not going to lean on your own knowledge. Because when you do, you're not able to grow. You must grow yourself to grow your life every day. Day 2. Behold, I am doing something new. It's already happening. Don't you recognize it? I will clear a way in the desert. Listen to these words. I will make rivers on dry land. That's from Isaiah. Now, when you read this, 10, 2, and 4, this is not generic Bible. This is for you individually, for your soul Bible. It is true for that day. Many of us feel like we're in a desert. Many of us feel like we're in dry land that can't have any flow in a particular area of our life. Maybe not from human mind, but God can create a river where before there was none. Day number three. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Oh, so many people are. They're living their lives in a catatonic fear. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. There will be many things that you need and you will not win. There will be days when you drop the ball, but you can't let that define you. You will get another opportunity, a better opportunity. God is always with you. God is a God of second chances. Day number four. This week, you're going to pray this, 10, 2, and 4. Faith without works is dead. From James, you can't just pray for success. You have to develop a plan and work that plan. Become a co-creator with God. If you can do something about your situation, then do it. Stop making excuses. Stop procrastinating. And do it. Day number five. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God from Philippians. One of the most important things you can do in your life is to pray every day in thanksgiving and gratitude. Day number six. As I think in my heart, so am I. Your prayers and your thoughts can be your number one asset or your biggest liability. When you are alone in the office or the back bedroom, your thoughts can easily turn on you. They can become fear-based. Your ability to stay positive, to learn from all the experiences and shake off mistakes quickly are a big asset to your life. Pray for a more positive now. Day number seven. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power love, and sound mind, from Second Timothy. Make decisions 
in your life based on positivity instead of fear. Making decisions in anger, that is not good either. You'd be surprised how many people I hear from on prayer requests that are ready to make a major decision out of anger. I'll get them type of decision. It only gets us. It never really affects others as much as small human mind would hope. Day number eight. But these things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. This Bible verse reminds us that God's time is not your time. Oh, I'm telling you, my friends, how many times I've fought that. I want it, and I want it now. And then I push for it, and push for it, and push for it. If the time isn't right yet, it's not going to last. When you live in God's time, it makes everything magic. You let go of the strain. You start eating soup with a big soup spoon. You get more that way. And life becomes sweet. Day number nine. Happy is the person who finds wisdom and the person who gains understanding from Proverbs. Decide to be a lifelong learner in life. That is so very important. Never get to the point of a know-it-all. There is always more to learn about God. I reserve the right to change my opinion at any time about the major things, about the minor things. Because I'm in human body and in human mind. And sometimes I can have God wisdom come through that changes everything. Every outlook that I have in a millisecond of time. We must be the same way. What awe and wonder it brings even to older, cynical eyes. Day 10. Have I told you these things so that in me you may have peace? In this world you may have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. He wasn't just talking about him. He was saying, follow me and you will overcome the world too. The mountains of the problems, the big challenges. Try this for the next 10 days, 10, 2, and 4 in the afternoon. If I could guarantee you something from up here, I would guarantee you a spiritual experience. You can't do something like this without being touched profoundly. I want to share a story with you about S.F.B. Morris. Morris was the inventor of the telegraph. In an interview, he was asked, when he was working on his great invention, the changed humankind in that day, if he ever got to a certain point where he couldn't go any further, where he had no idea what would come next, where he didn't know where to go or how to proceed. And he said to the interviewer, oh yes, many times. And the interviewer asked him, looking into his eyes, at such times, sir, what did you do next? 
He said, may I answer you in confidence, sir? It is a matter in which the public really knows nothing about. I prayed for more light, and more light came. Years later, when the flattering honors came because of my invention, I never felt that I deserved them. It came not because I am superior to others, but because God gave the gift through me. You can imagine the excitement as the inventor prepared to send his first message on his telegraph. What was the first message that he was going to type that would go down throughout history? Here is the exact message of the first Morris Code. What hath God brought about? During World War II, there was a church in Strasbourg that was destroyed. Nothing remained in this church except a heap of rubble and broken glass, or so the people thought, until they began clearing away all the debris. They found a statue of Christ still standing erect in spite of the bombing. It was unharmed except both hands were missing. Eventually, the rebuilding of the church began. One day, a sculptor saw the figure of Christ and he offered to carve new hands. The church officials met to consider the sculptor's friendly gesture and they decided not to accept the offer. Why? Because the members of the church said, our broken statue touches the spirits of people because he has no hands to minister to the needy or to feed the hungry or enrich the poor except our hands. God inspires, we perform. A native of the Congo once prayed a prayer that I absolutely love. Listen to this prayer. Dear Lord, you be the needle and I be the thread. You go first and I will follow wherever you lead. As we receive the blessings, the energy, the fuel of God, we can't keep it to ourselves. We have to give that away to others. A lot of people practice what I call safe Christianity. But oneness with God requires participation. God can take a worn out, stressed out life, cleanse it with the purity of Christ, put God's spirit in it and make it a blessing to all of humanity. And this is what we pray will happen through us. But we have to walk the talk. The other day on television, I saw a woman who was anorexic, clearly. And she was asked, what is your hobby? And she answered, reading cookbooks. You can read some of the greatest recipes that have ever been in a cookbook, but you can't smell those recipes or taste those recipes from the book. They have to be incorporated into your life through making them and eating them. It's the same with the Bible. A good forward-thinking life is a recipe. A human being is only as good as her or his ingredients. Christ has no hands but your hands to do the work. Christ has no feet but your feet to lead humans in the way. Christ has no tongue to tell humans how to live. Christ has no help but your help.
to bring humans out of despair. The only Bible that a careless world will ever read is you. You are the gospel. You are the creed. You are God's message given in word and given in deed. Here's my closing prayer. Lord, we can't hold much, but we can overflow lots. I'm willing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.